Ah, draft physics presentation. <laughs> Feels like it's been a while. I've been working on some other things and such and blah 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 and so I figured I'd do a comment video, but their comments really don't deserve much of a response. Sell them on subject and um this you know people are just too stupid. <laughs> Sorry. I find uh, through through my experimentation with interacting with people that they're too stupid. Okay, anyway, uh, so solving tornadoes. Oh, this is the idiot. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, Jim, uh, whatever it was. Um, mix something or other. Um, the the guy who uh, thinks global warming's uh, you know, some sort of truther <laughs> theory. Anyway, even though I agree mostly with your assessment of EU and WT, so that's Electric Universe and Wilbur Thornton, Wallace Thornhill, is that it? Something like that. Anyway, although along the lines that yes, it is largely a religion, yes, loosely based on scientific premise or vice versa. It just doesn't really matter. The point is, is for no good reason whatsoever, they mix into the science some sort of feel-good bullshit that somehow we need to change the paradigm because if we change the paradigm, we'll understand that we're pixies and, and, and we'll understand how to eat the proper amount of pixie dust. I mean, there's just no need to, to go there. You know, if you're if you're going to say physics has got made some mistakes, just stick to the science. Don't do this philosophy shit on top of it. Uh, I don't think. Anyway, your own assessment of humans is mostly uh, see this. There's no point. I don't. I haven't made any videos here defending a theory. Uh, beyond the statement of it's my observations humans are shitheads okay so beyond that I'm not making arguments here about why humans suck I'm just stating as a general my perception thing it's just an opinion and it's only relevant to the fact that you type shitty comments I mean I wouldn't have to bother saying oh humans suck it's merely an explanation for ah and that's why the comments are always irrelevant and stupid it's because you're idiots. Yeah, that's just an added, you know, um, to, to to make more complete the definition of the suck. All right, um, your own assessment of humans is mostly nihilistic garbage. Based now, I mean, nihilistic how? I'm the most unnihilistic person there could possibly be. I think value is intrinsically discoverable in the world that anything feeling is making value it's just flying out of it in you know it weighs a ton in value matter i mean it, i just i don't understand I, i'm you can't call me a nihilist you lunatic because i'm not one <laughs> i mean it's just idiotic Nihilistic garbage based on on a severe misunderstanding of evolution. So this idiot thinks there was some sort of special thing that happened in human evolution. The pixies did construct a finger and they shoved it up our little buttholes and gave us pixie power. Oh, I mean, it's just these whack jobs. Anyway, understanding of evolution in general and human evolution in particular so he thinks all of evolution has some sort of little magic bits in it <laughs> yeah the magic tick evolution uh, your description would have us believe I didn't make any description on this channel so again this is totally irrelevant to the videos made on this channel so this is just so obnoxious you stupid fucking cunt Okay, your description would have us believe humans are more like baboons than humanoids. It doesn't really matter. They, all of them, have some features that we have in common and features we don't have in common. But mostly because of the environment they evolved to. And the thing that's interesting about baboons is that they're sort of doing the early man thing. And that they still run to the trees now and then, but they do a lot of prairie walking 
and their diet, you know, um, is largely what humans were doing, which is, you know, eating grass. The first tools made by humans, grass cutting. <laughs> you know, and um, you know, we were also a, 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 but look how aggressive they look. They look like some sort of animal that goes around, you know, um, chasing shit down, but it's really not. Anyway, can you imagine baboons organizing themselves? This is almost stupid to say, since baboons live in troops. <laughs> but anyway, organizing themselves into the large groups and producing the technology that has us humans have, that us humans have, I can't. So you can't imagine that if they acquired language, okay, that is the ability to say things like, hey, wait a minute, that hurt. You know, just as little pieces at a time like we did. I mean, you really think there's something magic that happened in our brain. You don't really understand that it was just one little thing that tipped that made the difference in terms of vocabulary. It, it isn't the size of our brain that has anything to do with it. It's the fact that we devote some portion of our brains to vocabulary. And vocabulary is the thing that made us different. And if I take your vocabulary away from you, you still think you're going to be smart and capable? You're going to be better than a dog? Well, you're not. We've already done that experiment. Okay, we've had children raised without language, and it doesn't do them much good, fucker. Anyway, um, all right. So what an idiot. So this, so this, this is just garbage. It has nothing to do with the video you're posting to. It has nothing to do with the subjects discussed on this channel. It's just an obnoxious and rude pile of crap. Okay, stick with the physics. Your philosophy is misguided. So should I post on your channel something like stick with stick with shoving your fingers in your ass and don't go near thinking because you can't do it right? Should I post that on your channel? <laughs> Asshole. Even though EU is largely a religion, even though, well, I mean, it's a fact in and of itself. It doesn't need to be even though it's just a point you can make and say why pour crap into anything you're baking you know why why pour a bottle of crap into anything it can never do it any good adding crap to salad or sandwiches or any it just can't it can't possibly help so get the religion out of it because it doesn't belong there uh, so is much of modern f science. Well, it, it's not really uh, hard religion in, in a sense. It's it's this it's the same kind of thing though. The same kind of thing you're preaching. A bunch of human centric. Um, let's feel good about our our adventure in the universe kind of mush. It's drivelly little optimism mush from a bunch of egomaniacal silly humans. Okay. Electricity does have more to do with our reality than current science generally recognizes. Well, since I believe electricity is caused by magnetism, then you have to say magnetism does. Yes. <clears throat> Here is a perfect example of how a modern scientist, um, what is this, metallurgically is ha whatever is hamstrung by ignorance of the influence of electricity in this case static electricity concerning the drying of wet shoes so he posts a link to a thunderbolts message board where they're discussing his theory in the third person right the solving tornadoes guys so you know he's just such a fraud you know being he's he's, he's creating interest in his own stuff by talking about himself in the third person. Um, you know, too stupid. So it starts with some stupid thing about some idiot shoes. And he says, well, maybe this theory is right that air is, wet air is, <laughs> is heavier than warm air, I mean, uh, um, unwet air. Um, we get this dopey, idiotic theory of molecules sticking together and blah, blah, blah. And look, the whole thing is just dependent on convection. You want to you want to evaporate stuff, you've got to create a flow of air. 
so the water molecules move away <laughs> and then therefore you can attach more water to the other molecules and it's a heat transfer the thing that loses the water gets cold so therefore the thing that when the water molecule molecule leaves the thing that loses the water gets cold and the thing that gains it must get warm so that's convection that means goes up <laughs> okay and it creates convection stupid so anyway totally off all of the subjects on this channel just nothing close to being anything to do with anything I'm talking about you stupid cunt okay. Ken Wheeler is a narcissistic blusterer well okay yes I agree but isn't that obvious is also um, his his science is poorly exercised in the sense he does idiotic experiments claims that he's demonstrating something he isn't demonstrating like look at the light getting bent and stuff like that um, he's just a real bad example of um, the critics you know of the um, the dissidents he just makes us all look bad. That's the more important fact. He makes dissident physics look bad. First off, a lot of credit to so this is some new guy, Brian Robertson. First off, a lot of credit to you, to the two of you. See, I, I just don't want to. You should get the idea that I really don't want to be in any category that Ken is in. <laughs> you know, in in theory there's because he's he's so obnoxious to all the things I value which are having integrity you know being honest <laughs> you know um, uh, I don't know the right word for it but um, making a straight up kind of argument you know not picking on dead people you know having the courage to actually pick on somebody alive or somebody older than five years old and he just doesn't have any of those he, he has no courage has no integrity and he just doesn't give a shit about the actual truth <laughs> you know, and he's just selling soap um, mostly the soap that is the lard that he is made of he's selling himself you know as rendered fat anyway for posting these videos so yeah so right off you just you might as well just throw it away it's a useless compliment if you're going to attach you, you know what I'm saying because I have to assume you have retarded judgment so you, you know when you so if you say oh that was brilliant almost as good as and I say what do you mean you think that guy does anything good oh, you're stupid so so it's almost a it's a reverse compliment you see anyway it takes a lot of courage to put your thoughts out there in the open. No, it creates a lot of irritation. See, irritation is what makes you do something. You you sit here and you say, that's nauseous. That's making me sick listening to these stupid physicists talking about this, this fucking pixie bullshit. <laughs> and so you have to do something about it because it's making you sick. And, you know, Ken is sickening in terms of the, the pitiful... Um, the, 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 um, his 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 like I said, his science doesn't have any depth. It's just a bunch of multisyllabic words. It has absolutely there's no there's no physics in his physics. None of it's physical. <laughs> okay, that is after all how we push things forward. Well, obviously, things aren't getting pushed forward. A bunch of idiots are running the show. A bunch of idiots like a Ken Wheeler. A bunch of jerks and morons. You know, people who you know <laughs> spend way too much money on crap. <laughs> you know, uh, magic money. Anyway, as far as Ken's comments, he makes comments somewhere. I think <laughs> charitably he was trying to be poetic. Well, if you think he was trying to be poetic, that's just idiotic. He's obviously talking about the, it's simplex. Um, he's not being poetic. He's making declarative statements about the nature of reality he thinks there's such things as um, instantaneous 
um, transmission. These are declarations he's making. Light doesn't really have a constant speed. If I really want to, I, he thinks it moves slower in things and then it speeds back up. <laughs> if I really want to deconstruct his arguments, ultimately it hangs on a flawed understanding of what science defined broadly, you mean denotatively, <laughs> you know, use his own Ricard, you know, eccentric and disconnected language, as if anybody says that in reality, actually is, and what mathematics is capable of. Well, he obviously likes mathematics when he's playing with it. Pi over psi equals ni di blah 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 blah, you know, and he has his little theory of math. <laughs> you know, there are incredibly sophisticated tools for describing observed and yes, in most often the case, particularly in my profession, unobserved phenomenon. Well, I don't know what an unobserved is, um, but um, you know, I mean, you know, beneath observation, um, the things you can't see. I think they're doing a really poor job of it. So again, you think that that. Um, I, I would argue that their math is, first off, not as accurate as they claim it to be, and I'd say, yes, it's clearly founded on so many, it's, the math can't be very good if you can put, if you can put completely wrong explanations of the causes in and still get the right answer. That's sort of an, an example of broken math when you don't have to have the parts in the right place. It's like a shitty car where you can pull a part off and just, you know, stick any old part in it as a re replacement. Most importantly, it accurately predicts, oh, this predicts shit again, with some degree of precision. Again, predicts what? Every mathematical theory I've ever seen wasn't a prediction. It was a description. They see certain phenomena, then they describe it with a mathematical framework, and then you say, Look, it predicted the framework. They drew the mathematics, they contrived the mathematics to describe. And you're calling that a prediction. I think that's silly. Um, without this, and this is where Ken comes up wholly lacking, you're left with nothing but religion. Well, frankly, I don't think model making has to be absorbed in a bunch of Latin formulations. I think you can say things like the inverse square law or pi or you know there's a relationship between the frequency of the light and its tendency um, to um, disturb electrons or something like that. You don't need a mathematical formula and most of these formulas start doing things that are in my opinion completely nonsensical like where you start saying velocity is frequency. That to me is a broken formula. When frequency and velocity end up being interchangeable, that's a broken formula. All right, well, I'll leave this stupid comment, but I didn't like it much. Uh, let's see. His uh, modality is perpetual gaslighting. Whatever. Uh, he's fat. You could just say that too. Uh, he's bald. He's got tattoos. I'm just saying, you know. Okay, <laughs> you know, I, I, the point of me making the video is not for us to list a bunch of insults about Ken. The point is, is to recognize that he is doing really bad science, puffing it all up, and he's getting rewarded for it. And that's the part that's the obscenity. Uh, okay, Harry, Moo, Moo, whatever. Hey, I know who Wheeler is. Uh, see the attached YouTube link. LOL. Keep up the good work. So, it's a Saturday Night Live skit. And moderately funny. Haha. <laughs> okay. Anyway, if you're not going to at least learn to pronounce words correctly. So, again, language isn't about conveying, right? So, I speak fairly clear English in a fairly clear voice. I mean, I don't have a heavy any kind of accent thing. Um, but I do clearly, through my own and for my own purposes, 
don't highly regard uh, formal traditional structure in terms of how many words are developed, formed, and spoken. So I will break them at will, um, but I think if somebody was to poll a hundred people who listen to me and a hundred people who listen to some other people, that um, if they had to write down what the person said, they would be more accurate in terms of being able to recognize what I said. So, fuck you. This is Dennis McGee. How can you expect <clears throat> to counter Wheeler's arguments? So, somehow, because Ken says things like, it's simplex, but it's not simple. <laughs> you know, I'm, I, I, I guess I don't have the intellect to match uh, that. <laughs> yeah, sure. You are intellectually lazy. Well, you're probably fat and stupid. <sighs> you know, you have to make an argument somewhere. If you're going to say Ken is right, then you have to demonstrate it with some sort of evidence that demonstrates that somehow Ken is on something called a right track. And you're not going to find any evidence because all his heroes are dead, and when they were alive, their physics was incomprehensible. Okay. Is it any wonder that Gary has almost ten times the normal thumbs down than most YouTubers? Uh, yes. Uh, this channel came after my other channel that kind of insults the human race a little bit. And therefore there's little petty small penis people like you who have to go trolling. Ooh. <laughs> Jeez, you're really dumb. So this is an asshole who types four comments on a video. He can't handle doing it all at once. Uh, okay, he has to squirt it all over the place. Um, can't handle the mission. You know, get it in the bowl. Uh, Gary, smash two pound neodymium magnets together in opposition. So you mean tie them together? You mean tape them together? You can't smash them together. Drop it off a building with another pair in attraction. Okay. So, <laughs> this sounds like an experiment. So you tape two together that are repelling each other and then you allow two to stick to each other the right way. Okay. Same mass. Different, <clears throat> different drop times. I bet that's not true. <laughs> yeah, that's what I bet. Explain that, Gary, you jackass. We have to cite a reference. If you're going to say, you know, look at the picture I have of a UFO, and then you're not going to post the picture, really pointless. So I doubt um, the credibility of your source, which is what? You know, whatever. Some sort of you know, crayon website, you know, where they give you a crayon and you're able to, you know, crayon. Alright. Uh, Gary, Ken has shown that two magnets smash together, so he's doing it again, smash together, in the opposite ori orientation, repelling, do not fall at uh, one half GT times two. Uh, what have you done? So where did he show that? You, again, you didn't post the link. And I doubt Ken has ever done such an experiment. Uh, we've already seen him do the experiment where he put the magnet on the scale. And he demonstrated that the magnet disturbs the scale. And therefore the scale doesn't measure the magnet's weight accurately. And so then he slides the magnet to the edge of the scale and says, See, it only weighs 1.5 ounces. And then when he does the experiment, he drops it down the middle. And says, See, look, it changed. You already proved that it changed, retard. I'm just saying Ken's experiments are idiotic. Okay. Outside black budget programs, whatever that means. Gary, uh, give you nothing, nothing. You suck it. Yeah, well, you're useless. Okay. So last comment from him. Gary, you seem to like, uh, like an asshole. You seem like an asshole. Yes. I'm... I'm perfectly comfortable being called an asshole. That's right. I have just 
to be called an asshole by assholes. You know what I'm saying? It's the greatest thing you can be called is an asshole by an asshole. Get it? Ken is a true citizen scientist. And again, doing what? Fake experiments done really poorly, making grand claims that he doesn't demonstrate with any rational theory. Okay, you are just sneezing hair farmer. Whatever. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, there. That's, that's probably enough to say, right? Fuck you. There, we're done now, right? Stupid ass. <laughs> yes. Uh, somewhere around here, anyway. Oh, I just can't stand these people. All right, so so this guy, Michael Reese. Now, okay, I've done a ton of videos on why lensing doesn't make any sense, and people just keep arguing that look, there's a uh, look, Einstein ring. Okay, so he says, how do you explain observations of Einstein rings without bent space-time? I explain any phenomenon that tends to be circular, okay, as everything that we already know happens like uh, supernovas. We have images of, a, of the residue from a supernova and it forms a ring. From your own life experience I'm sure you've seen explosions that cause smoke rings and other kinds of rings. That Lots of things radiate evenly like that and so there could be lots of artifacts in space created by explosive events that would create rings. So rings aren't a big surprise idea. Asshole jackass. The problem with your theory is, as I've already explained, but we'll, we'll, we'll go to the website with the hell. I mean the Wikipedia page and see if we can find one of the crappiest images ever, which it will be. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is one of the galactic ones, which are even worse. Um, let's see, that's not going to be in your view, unfortunately. And I can't scroll the page sideways, so well, maybe I just click on the link and that might work. So here's one of the classic Hubble images. So there'd be absolutely no explanation for, first off, the unevenness of this. The two big blobs here, they should be catty corner to each other, not, not in this position. Look at the thickness of this thing. So at the inverse square law, okay, he's saying the inverse square law makes a, a really good mirror, I mean a really good lens. Because look how even all of that stuff is. I mean, it definitely had form, and the form is being revealed on both sides, theoretically. So, so it had some sort of uh, texture, some sort of interesting shape. And he's saying that a, a lens, that's the inverse square law, which means it wouldn't be a lens like this, concave, and you know that works. No, it'd be a lens shaped like this. Okay, a bizarre lens. No hope of rendering an image. Just that this one is at, at a distance has no hope of rendering an image. And it's just going to create, you know, blobs of light. Way too much detail. The thickness of the image means, again, at the inverse square law, there's no way you could focus, you know, it, because it just, it's not doing the thing a lens is doing. It, it's not tapering at the right uh, amount for the focus. So, there would be huge distortions. There wouldn't be a clean line on the outside, a clean line on the inside. That wouldn't be possible with an inverse square law lens. And that's just the beginning of the arguments. So yes, what I'm saying, suggesting is, whatever this artifact is, okay, it was created by some other event. Like the two things collided, something else happened. There's some other explanation for its existence. It's not a lensed object. It's I just look just looking at it, it's preposterous to think it would be. If you added up how much light this is, the object would have to be incredibly bright that this came from. Insanely bright, actually. <laughs> so yes, I'm saying this is way undercooked physics. And you fall for it, well that's you're bad, in my opinion. Uh, I don't think there's any other images worth. I mean, you know, this one's just so so bad. So 
again, gravitational lensing wouldn't be sloppy. It wouldn't have square sides. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be misshapen like this. No chance. Gravity does spherical things. The higher the gravity, the more spherical it gets. That's the rules of gravity. That's why all the planets get round. Uh, you can't have high mass and be square or be some other bizarre shape. God, you people are just so freaking dumb. Oh, and the smiley face one. I, I mean, there's no point even going to all the problems with this one. I mean, you know, all of the wrong angles. Again, all straight. Look at the little thin lines. No blurs, no blending, no anything. I mean, it's just a preposterous theory that that's caused by light being bent. Insanely stupid. All right. I mean, it's just such bad science. All right, so anyway, but I've made the argument over and over and over. The, pr the thing you haven't done is explain why there's a ton of places we know there's really high gravity and no blobs. Not a single image of, instead of an Einstein, see, instead of these perfect things, the ones that are a one in a billion chance of an Einstein ring, a perfect Einstein ring, like one in a billion. Well, where are all the other 999,999 really bad Einstein rings? And they should be some really preposterously bad ones where the sun is right behind the lens, really close, and it creates a huge flare. Where are those images? Oh, that's right. They don't exist. So the thing that should be happening nine times out of ten can't be found. And the only thing found is the thing that happens once out of ten. And you're saying you got a good physics theory there. No, I think you're a dupe. Okay, there is no proof that forces do not interact with each other. Well, in the first place, it's not my obligation to prove they don't interact. It's your obligation to prove they do, stupid. You don't assume the positive thing. You don't assume the there are UFOs until you prove they don't exist. No, you have to prove they don't exist. <laughs> you know, I mean, you have to prove they exist. It's like a god. I have no obligation to assume the default condition is gods exist. That's not the default condition. You're the one with the extraordinary claim. You're the one that has to have the evidence. Now, the funny part is, he says, well, there is no proof that, you know, so this is how he actually wrote it. There is no proof that forces do not interact with each other. Now, the way you should have phrased that is, there's no evidence indicating, or something like that. Because evidence is what defines what a proof is. A proof is made out of evidence. That's what you go to court with, evidence. All right? And there's a ton of evidence. All of Maxwell's equations, Einstein's equations, the fact that those equations work when you recognize that the forces don't interact with each other and they don't work if you assume they do. So that's a huge one right there. And then a ton of observational evidence about how electrons function and other things function and that mm, photons don't react and bend around things and stuff like that. And especially don't bend around each other. So you're an idiot. Okay. Superior mind says, sometimes superior mind doesn't say, I guess, I guess. anyway, no conclusive proof. I, again, the proof is conclusive in the sense there's no evidence of forces interacting with forces. Magnets don't bounce, the magnetic forces of magnets don't bounce off of each other. The forces of charge don't bounce off of each other. The charge has to actually reach the other charged body. All right. But the evidence is <clears throat> that an atomic component interaction of some kind is necessary to alter characteristics of regular force transmission. Now, and yes, and understanding what a force is. A force is the stuff moving the speed of light. If something's not moving the speed of light, it's not a force, since the results are extremely precise and reliable. Yes, well, the better way to say it is 
all the reliable math depends on the truth of it and that's why the math works is because force doesn't interact with force. All right. Hawking radiation is one proof of photons colliding with colliding and creating. So again, first off, there's no proof that Hawking radiation even exists. Hawking radiation is just a word for a class of radiation that is beta and gamma and all kinds of radiation is called Hawking radiation. It's not a special new kind of radiation. It's just called that because it's the radiation it being expelled from black holes. <sighs> but there's absolutely no evidence of any photon colliding and creating. So you don't have any evidence of that whatsoever. Alright, oh, these people are so depressing reading the comments. All right, parapologic. Interesting, many distinguished mainstream theoretical physics are now saying that what <coughs> they thought was the cosmic background radiation could just as easily be a pattern caused by dust within our own galaxy. Well, this gets complicated because I don't know exactly if they're saying that. They're... <laughs> Uh, they're saying that well the bicep too might have been fooled by dust I don't know if all radiation is created by well, anyway uh, lecture titled Paul whatever Steinhardt <coughs> um, what has been learned from bicep to all of this stupid expansion crap and contraction crap and all this other bullshit that's tied to this cosmic background radiation that subject I'm not very interested in to hear the truth um, because it seems like it's all going to be based on a bunch of projections and speculations that are way beyond the data produced. So all I said was I think it'd be interesting, you know, there's a certain amount in the FM band. You know, they always say you can turn in the cosmic background radiation by, you know, tuning in your radio and hear that noise. Well, that's the cosmic background radiation, you know, that kind of crap. So it's on all the channels. It's not just microwaves. Um, so microwaves is the dominant one and there's probably a reason why microwaves are the dominant one because it probably started off as microwaves uh, you know or, um, and clearly scatter changes you know one photon can go into scatter at a, at a frequency and it can leave cut in half two photons leave at half the frequency so clearly scatter can um, reduce the frequency of the energy that went in. So clearly you could take something like um, visible light and turn it into microwaves through scatter. So yes, all of that's viable, but I'm just saying the whole, that whole conversation is just it's, just, it's it's not ripe. It's not ripe for declarations by anybody, in my opinion. So. So apparently this orphan red person who, who's a great info, well, there's some kind of flat earth nutter. So it's like all these people are idiots. So it's like one idiot arguing with another idiot and arguing with another idiot. And this John Adams guy seemed a little bit whatever, but you are totally misrepresenting the facts or are simply ignorant. There is no contention over cosmic background radiation or what it is. Why well, there frankly should be. <laughs> okay, the fact that people think they know what it is and they have this idiotic notion that the universe expanded faster than the radiation moved, which is just so silly. So you think the entire universe, the, the space expansion, the whatever it is, the extra space creation, happened at a rate that, that was faster than the speed of light. I mean, this is how they make their theories make sense, and you think that makes sense. I think that just sounds like absolute shit. All right, it's just the particular experiment that claimed to show cosmic inflation uh, that was in error. Well, it was attempting to show cosmic inflation by using cosmic background radiation as part of the argument. But that's the whole point, right? I mean, cosmic inflation is premised on some notion that the inflation can take place at a rate that's faster than the speed of light. So what's the point of this conversation? In my opinion, that's... Uh, that's an extraordinary claim <laughs> that just is kind of a, a deal breaker. All right, so then this orphan red thing rags on 
uh, John as being an old fart and, uh, you know, get with the program, new modern physics. And then so Parabologic says, John Adams, you are mistaken. What the CMB, um, yeah, so they say cosmic microwave background, you know, which it isn't. It's everything background is in a, <coughs> is in contention based on these findings. Physicists have taken it to be the after image of cosmic inflation event which occurred after the Big Bang. So first it was caused by the Big Bang itself and the heat and now it's some kind of being caused by inflating. That somehow inflating creates background radiation? I wonder how it does that. Instead, based upon the new data they've been gathering with their new technology, they found that the pattern of polarized radiation... So, see, they find all kinds of new things, right? There's just an article recently about some idiotic notion they created. They, they made heavy light or something, a new form of photon. It's really three photons stuck to each other, and it moves really slow, and they're just making this crap up. <sighs> their, their, new, their new technology... They don't even understand how their technology works. And it farts out something and they have all of these assumptions built in and then they just, they just, you know, it, it's confirmation bias all over the place. It's like, they, oh, we have a God gun, you know. <laughs> you know, it's that kind of silly. They, they just, they're just making up um, um, supernatural um, uh, technology. Um, they found that the pattern of polarized radiation they've been measuring actually strongly correlates to the distribution of dust within the magnetic field of the Milky Way galaxy. So, um, you know, it, it does get, you know, there, there's, I guess I just, jumping to conclusions is always dangerous, and you shouldn't jump. You should sort of be dragged to the conclusion. Now, sometimes in physics, you need to know the answer. Like if you're doing surgery or something, and you don't really know how much pressure a vessel can hold, but you know it's around 10 pounds per square inch, so close enough is good enough. But in these questions, there is no urgency. There's no urgent need to draw conclusions about big bangs or not big bangs. This stuff doesn't matter much, this cosmological bullshit. So they have no reason to jump to conclusions. Where in regular physics, you know, the, 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 on the quantum level, there's reasons because there's all kinds of utility and then be able to, you know, engineer some math so you can get some work done. And so you need some, all right, we'll accept Huygens even though it's nothing. It's a placeholder for the real truth. We'll accept virtual photons, a placeholder for the real truth. We'll accept bent space, placeholder for the real truth. You know, you can fudge, and there's some cause to fudge, but there's no cause in these questions. There's, no, there's absolutely no value in knowing whether the universe big banged or whether it's a steady state. There's just zero value in the answer to that question. Zero. Again, you're confusing the contention over measuring the polarization of the CMB, not the CMB itself. Again, the polarization is an interesting feature because polarization is one of the consequences of scatter. Okay. It's unfortunate you have to misrepresent the facts and others here are believing it. All right, and so then this is where it's ironic that you seem to hate the scientific method so much that you reap all the benefits of it as we speak. Well, again, you know, the benefits of science versus the benefits of experimentation. So again, you think all this theory has created our better world. Theory didn't do it. Experiments did it. All right. They've been lying about the transistor and the integrated circuit since the beginning. These things weren't invented by theory. They were invented by demonstrated experiment. I mean, once they had the photoresistor, once they had Einstein's photoelectric effect, they were almost already there. They don't need they didn't need any theory to find the truth. They found it by taking pieces of silicone and saying, look, we get a, we get a little bit of an effect. 
Let's see if we can get more of an effect. So let's try this, and let's try that, let's try this, let's try that, to get more and more of an effect. That's how it was done. It was trial and error. That's, that's what gave us a better future. It, it was done like the Wright brothers did it. They didn't have some brilliant theory of how planes work. <laughs> they didn't. They trialed and errored the right answer. I suggest you educate yourself. Wikipedia, well, Wikipedia is full of shit. Um, all right, edit. I also just noticed this orphan red person is a flat earther. Yes, that is quite disturbing. Really don't want flat earthers watching my videos. You know, I really, you know, I mean, you're just saying too stupid. You're just writing it right on your head. It's like painting a swastika on there or something. It's just saying you're too stupid. Okay, you're quite mistaken. It's blind faith scientism that I hate so much. Scientism. I mean, it's just this, it's a silly piece of rhetoric. You think an intellectual person, a smart person, is going to think the word scientism and they're going to hear what? What are you talking about, scientism? Oh, you mean being rational and doing experiments and drawing conclusions based on the evidence? No, scientism is really good. The bad part is is that physics, conventional physics, isn't very scientific. <sighs> All right, precisely because it undermines the legitimacy of power and of real science. And the real science is what? Flat earthing? Also, Wikipedia is not trustworthy site for up-to-date implications of new findings in the fields of physics, uh, astrophysics, and chemistry. Well, you're, whatever, too silly. Too many people like you go in and edit uh, it to ensure it maintains your dogmas. Well, clearly it's going to reflect um, the dominant powers that be. So, yes, it's, it doesn't have any obligation to reflect the fringe. Now, I think it should at least point to the fringe. And the fact that it doesn't even want to point to the counter-arguments, that's the weakness. Alright, uh, the tenets of your religion. Well, obviously I think your religion. Uh, you use the word like scientism and you're a flat earther. That sounds like you've got to be a religious cooker. Religious nuts use the word scientism. All right, uh, fragmented soul. Oh, I've been over this with so many times with people. You need to install ad blocker. Yeah, like I don't know what ad blocker is. I mean, it just amazes me. You know, I mean, I have so much more knowledge of internet infrastructure than you. I mean, you know, so much more. <laughs> you know, and you don't think I've heard of ad blocker? Uh, so it won't show ads when you are doing presentation. Point is, I don't. That's sort of a good point, just in the sense that for my videos, I should use it. So I did install it for that purpose. But this idea, okay, that iBlocker solves a problem, it doesn't solve a problem. The problem is I'm paying for the ads, whether I view them or not. All right? Every consumer has to pay for this stupid ad shit. And we're all paying this Google monopoly, okay, these exorbitant rates to have these people, these suckers, be suckered into buying shit. And that's the obscenity. And I want to know who's buying ads. Because those are the companies I won't purchase anything from. Because I know they're wasting my money and giving it to Google. Anyway, Ken seems to be talking gibberish. He could be differently abled. Uh, again, more insulting Ken really isn't the point. Just getting to the point that Ken's science is rubbish and that Ken is a coward. That you know Ken has been called out and politely, you know, his his company in conversation has been politely requested. And it has been argued that I will. I will tie whatever arms he wishes behind my back to have the opportunity to challenge his physics. And he's too much of a coward to defend his physics. All right. Ken Wheeler uses clever sounding words. Okay, I think I already read this. Basically a preacher. Yes, that's all. Just, just to pull the wool over the dumbass's eyes with big words.
and some pretense that look at me I'm just an honest guy I'm just trying to do my best I'm, you know yeah well yeah I got two houses and a million dollars with a camera gear but yeah, I need your donations <laughs> because you know I only get so much from my stock dividends you know I mean, shit. <laughs> you know, he could go without, you know, I could live for like 25 years, you know, just selling his lenses, you know, one at a time. Hello? Hello? I'm saying hello to the phone. Hello? hung up on me. The spammer hung up on me. Damn it. I didn't even get to insult them. I didn't get to say, get the cancer you deserve, or anything. Damn it. Alright. So, until the next time. I mean, it's just such an evidence. Yeah. Oh, you don't understand human evolution. Oh, you mean the, the human evolution that has us in the 21st century playing these kind of games. Let's see if we can steal money from old people. And we're letting them do it. We're letting them do it. <laughs> yeah, that's not civilization. That's idiocracy. Alright. Fuck. Oh, that's enough of a video. Yeah, I think I'm done. I mean, I should have not started. <laughs> uh, I mean, you did post the crap. Thank you for posting. But yes, I was, as always, totally unimpressed with the quality of your argumentation. It, frankly, just plain sucked.